Okay, this is going to be uh, part one to building a uh, Nathan Stubble Field coil. Um, to start with, we have a soft iron core. Um, I got this from Sergeant Welsh. This is 13 uh, millimeters by 15 um, centimeters. And on this coil, I'm going to go ahead and use a polycarbonate um, end caps. I've used wood, they tend to warp uh, with time, especially if you bury the coil in the ground. So on this one, I'm going to use these. Uh, polycarbonate end caps. You see I've pre-drilled uh, some holes here um, for the for the start for the beginning wires the wires that first uh, begin to wrap around the coil. And I got some JB Quick here to uh, glue these on. One quick note uh, rough up the ends where you glue those on with some sandpaper. You need to really glue these on securely. These are going to want to fall off if not while you're uh, building the coil they'll want to fall off later. So I'm going to mix up some glue and we'll glue those on. Okay, I've got these uh, securely glued on here, and uh, so the next step is we need to insulate this uh, central soft iron core from the uh, wires, especially from the iron wire that's going to be running uh, directly on top of it. So I'm just going to use some uh, black electrical tape for that. You could use cotton, you could use uh, masking tape. My idea in using the black electrical tape will be that it'll let the uh, electromagnetic field be even closer to the soft iron. Um, it's real important that you get right up into the edges on every layer of cotton, anything that you tape, because uh, that iron wire will always want to sneak over there and rest on top of the soft iron and can short it out. So you'll see as we go through this build process that um, probably the toughest thing is just keeping all the layers uh, from shorting out on the, the layer just below. So I've come up, after building uh, quite a few of these little guys, I've come up with some ways to to do that that work well for me. I'm sure I'm sure you all may even come up with something better out there, but I will go ahead and uh, do it the way I've been doing it for the sake of this video. So don't, don't wrap, don't overlap uh, your tape around and around or anything. We just want one layer of tape on here. Again, I'm going to come down really tight into this corner here at the bottom because I do not want my wire to uh, short out in any way on that. And so you can see I've got the holes here that the wire can run through. I've got it's all ready to go. And next step will be to get our wire and uh, start winding this little guy. So, okay, um, for my iron wire, I'm going to use this 20 gauge uh, galvanized steel wire I got at Lowe's. That's easy to come by. The cotton uh, covered copper wire is a lot harder to find. Um, I will provide the link that I've been ordering this from. I've been ordering it from uh, overseas. But anyway, I'm using 0.9 millimeter copper wire. It's got a cotton covering. It's, 100, it's 125 grams per roll. I've got about five rolls down here in this large spool. Um, this wire is a little bit dirty. I've used it on some previous stubble fuel coils. I had to take it apart to make this uh, how to make a stubble field coil video. So this is uh, going to be interesting. You can see it's frayed here in a few places. Um, even with brand new wire, you have to be really careful that you don't uh, overbend this wire or uh, get some exposed wire anywhere that could short against the iron wire. So um, anyway, we'll start our first uh, winding of, of wires on this uh, coil. So I'm going to bring the cotton or the uh, copper wire up. I'm going to let it stick up about a quarter inch. Come over here and we'll bring our iron wire up. Oh, come on, get through there. There it goes. So each of those wires are uh, protruding about a quarter inch. Okay. Now I kind of support these wires to get a really tight bend in them to start the, uh, the winds. You can see here. We're coming around. Uh, I like to uh, kind of establish early on which is going to go on top and bottom. I'm going to have the uh, on this first wind here you'll see that the cotton I hope you can see that that the cotton covered uh, cotton wires is, is on the top and I've got the steel wire on the bottom. You have to keep quite a bit of tension on this as you work and I keep uh, sliding these over with my uh, thumbnail there to keep them nice and tight and close to each other. 
uh, you'll you'll wind this coil until you're dizzy and your uh, thumbs and your fingers hurt and then you're just getting started <laughs> these these things have a lot of winds and they take a lot of perseverance to to do it correctly but um, they look a little nicer when you use brand new uh, cotton covered wire but you can see here we're, we're progressing along nicely okay I'm going to turn the uh, camera off here and I'll turn it back on as I get down toward uh, the end okay we're almost to the uh, middle way here I just wanted to uh, start the camera and, and point out one thing that's terribly important throughout the winding process is that you keep um, tightening up these winds so you don't get any separation or big loose areas. You want to keep these guys as close to each other as possible and you want to keep a lot of uh, tension on these two wires as you go along. So you really can't uh, can't just at any point in time let go of these uh, these wires. If you let go of these they'll unravel and you'll have to start over winding again. I can't tell you how many times I've I've done that. As I come down toward the end and I need to stop and we need to put down our first uh, layer of cotton. I'll show you the the, uh, the technique I use to keep the wires from from unraveling. So anyway, I'll turn the camera off and continue on with this. Okay, I just want to point out one thing. Uh, this this uh, roll of uh, cotton covered copper wire here is an old roll that I've used on previous coils, and I see here that I have a spot where I spliced it. Um, to do that, I just took my soldering uh, iron and soldered it together. I then uh, took some masking tape and I put it around that splice. Um, anyway, I've already done that so I'm not going to redo it. That's just to insulate it from the iron wire adjacent to it. Now these splices always cause some grief because they they always throw off the rest of the wires just a little bit so obviously you want to keep those to a minimum and I go ahead and keep everything tight around the splice and then on the next uh, layer of winds when we come back over we just have to um, go on either side of it one more time and then we can go back to our normal uh, winding. You can see here the little bump um, on the next layer uh, I'll show you when we get to it but we'll go on this side of it and this side of it and then that will essentially make it level for the, uh, the layer on top of that it would be nice if we could get this cotton covered uh, copper wire in, in nice long uh, spools and I'm sure at some point we will find a source for that but currently we have these uh, smaller spools and because of that I have splices that will show up in this winding process. I may even have to splice the uh, iron wire. I've got 175 feet on each of these rolls and I think we'll go well past that. So anyway, just wanted to uh, point that out.